Oda Sensei, you're killing me right now. You're killing me. Why do you have to go out of your way to ruin Whitebeard's legacy like this with this self-proclaimed son? I think his name is Webble, Weeble, whatever. I'm gonna call him Weeble. So this this son, or I, I'm not even going to consider this dude Whitebeard's son. I, I don't think I'm. I'm just saying this right now. Until it is officially confirmed by the Whitebeard Pirates crew members or people, and it's officially confirmed, not by the mouth of that mother, and, you know, him proclaiming he is Whitebeard's son, I won't believe it. For now, there's evidence to support that this ain't Whitebeard's son, because Whitebeard, as we know, he wanted a family. He wanted a family. His entire goal wasn't just treasure and gold and riches and shit. It wasn't that. It was mainly about him having a family. And that's why he called his crew members sons. It was a big thing about Whitebeard. It was one of the main things that separated Whitebeard from other pirates. And to see how this dude just comes out and is like, Oh, I'm a son. I don't think Whitebeard would abandon his son and wife. Like, let, let's just go on the off chance and say that this is Whitebeard's son, and that is Whitebeard's wife. I don't believe Whitebeard is the type of character or person to abandon his child or his wife, regardless of how they look or anything. I don't think Whitebeard is the type of person to abandon his wife and child. So him to constantly say he wanted a family and when he found some family in his crew... I, it just makes me believe that this is not his son. I won't believe it. And then the other evidence you can get out of this is also how there's stitches on Webble or Weeble or whatever. He has stitches up the side of his face. And that looks like maybe his face got reconstructed to where it looks more like Whitebeard. Because in the chapter, you have it to where the mother shows him a picture of Whitebeard. And he's like, oh, I thought I was looking at a mirror and stuff. It makes you believe that maybe his face was reconstructed for he could look more like Whitebeard and make this story more believable to this, you know, son of supposedly Whitebeard. Now, the thing is, judging by the character that was introduced, he's not all that bright. He, he's not a bright character. He looks to be nothing but muscle. It seems like he does care for Whitebeard, but, like, the way he's acting, it seems like he does care for Whitebeard because he's like, hey, I want to take down that, you know, traitor Blackbeard because he's the one that, you know, hurt my father, killed my father. And to see that, I'm like, okay, so this dude is not really that bad. Like, he has good intentions, but he's being messed with, and he's being used by his mother. And to see the way it was done, especially how his mother's just wanting money and stuff, I don't believe that this mother is, you know, really who she claims to be. I think this mother might be working for Blackbeard, or might be working for maybe Big Mom in a way, because the glasses, the way the glasses look very similar. Whoever this person is working for... I don't believe that this dude is the son of Whitebeard. There's just too much evidence to go against him saying he is the son. But Oda could throw a curveball, and maybe this dude is Whitebeard's son. Then I have to question Whitebeard as a character, like, why'd you abandon your own son? Unless Whitebeard thought his son was dead. Then I could see something else. But for now, th this dude, I have to say... Besides him being a little bit stupid and not being Whitebeard's son, he's incredibly strong, he's one of the warlords, and the way he was built up in this chapter, he's devastating, because he's going around wiping out Whitebeard's crew, like nothing, and you see where towns behind him are just devastated and destroyed, and this dude has incredible strength, regardless if he is Whitebeard's son or not, he has incredible strength, and usually when you have a character that is, like, stupid, and also strong, that's a dangerous combination right there. That, that's kind of bad. <laughs> so, definitely going to lead into something kind of crazy in the future. Now, we also have it to where this dude is going to be going after Luffy. Supposedly, they're going to be trying to find Luffy because he might know some information. I'm willing to bet that this uh, new warlord might appear in Zo and, you know, fight Luffy and his crew. I'm looking forward to that if Oda takes that into, you know, this arc. Now, getting into other things, the first part of the chapter, it showcases the Bartow crew, and oh my god. Okay, so how in the hell did these guys make it into the New World without a navigator? Like, I, I know they're using a Dindin and Mushi, but how the fuck, how in the hell have they survived this long in the New World? I, I'm questioning a lot of things right now. I mean, they're hilarious, but how? How? Like... Face, face palm right now, just face palm. Like, how did you make it this far without a navigator? Ugh. Now, we also get to see where 
Frankie is still salty with Usopp. He's getting pissed with Usopp because Usopp's like, yeah, I'm God Usopp. You know, he has a high bounty. You see Frankie getting really pissed off in the panel, and then Usopp's holding his face because he probably got punched in the face by Frankie. So, yeah, seeing that entire panel work, it just goes to show you Frankie is still upset about them bounties. Now, we move into the final portion of the chapter, which has a lot of the beef I want to talk about. We have the next arc being set up. We're going to the next island, or if you could really call it an island, because it's a moving island, which is an ancient elephant. A 1,000 plus year old ancient elephant that moves around. The fucking thing is huge. It's just like, oh shit. Is it just me, or is this arc reminding me of Sky P arc? This reminds me a lot of Sky Island, the way it's, you know, kind of building up, because... It seems like this arc might be setting up for some void century information because the people on this island have been secluded from humans for a long time, for a thousand years, and that right there just goes to show you they might know something, or at the very least, the elephant has seen the void century. And I wonder what type of information we're going to get when we go to this arc. So there is a possibility of void century information in this arc, and for the island to be ancient, there's definitely gonna be some good information for anybody that loves the backstory of, you know, the world of One Piece. And yeah, so the arc is looking to be very good. I'm kinda sad that Sanji and his crew wasn't, you know, around in this chapter, because I wanna see more of them, but I mean, most likely we're gonna see them very soon because we're going to the same island they're at, or elephant they're at, the moving island. So yeah, tell me your thoughts in the comments below. How do you all feel about this chapter of One Piece? You all have a wonderful day or not wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.